Welcome to a brand new episode of the Oracle. Still, I think we're episode 35 or 36. Um, I don't know. Like uh, I did upload last week's episode and I know what number that I knew that what number that was when I uploaded it. Uh, but now that I actually <laughs> try to remember, I don't really know. Uh, but anyway, uh, we have to I have to apologize because I promised we will have speaker this week. Uh, however, he is going to he is, he is actually experiencing load shedding as we speak. Uh, so we'll hopefully yeah. have him again next week. Uh, but I think our best chance of having him, of talking to him, we'll have to actually record another episode this week. Uh, so help, hopefully that will happen. Mm -hmm. And for our first time viewers, thank you very much for joining us. Um, hopefully you will enjoy this time with us. We try our best uh, to entertain and to educate and do everything in between. Uh, but hopefully this will be a good time for you. Um, you'll have as much fun as, as we are having. Uh, but if you haven't subscribed as yet, please remember to subscribe. Please remember to like. Uh, please remember to tell your friends and family about this podcast because we do need to grow. And our growth will be um, our let, let me just say, because our growth will be the music industry's growth as well, uh, because there's a whole lot yeah. that we have planned. Uh, there's a whole lot that we're going to do. Um, with me, uh, for our first-time viewers, um, she is on my left, is the incredible, the superstar oracle, Z Mazibugo. Z, how are you doing? I'm back, thank you. How are you? <laughs> Happy Tuesday. Um, Happy New Week. Yeah, happy oh, yeah. new week. It is a Tuesday. We are recording on a Tuesday today. Um, I'm good, man. I'm good. Are you good? I'm all good, man. Just I'm I'm okay. I'm all good. We're yeah. live, guys. That's all that matters. <laughs> yeah, I guess that is all that matters that we are still alive. Uh, you know, I was actually looking, uh, I was going through my Twitter this past this past weekend. Um, I was looking, I, I saw that Rick Ross was having his car show. Uh, I think he had one last year, sometime last year. And yeah. he had one again uh, this year, apparently. And he's having it at his house, um, to add to that. Um, having it at his house, he also performed. I think Nick Mill was there as well, uh, performing. I don't know who else was there. Um, and it looks like this guy is just living life right now. Well, because that is small day. Uh, <laughs> I thought he was saying Casper. I'm just like, yeah. like, it took me a while. It took me a while. I'm like, oh, he's thinking about Casper. I'm like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I don't think Casper was there. But um, Rick Ross, <laughs> on that video, Rick Ross is saying that he's coming here, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's coming, coming here. Coming here. He wants to link up with um, Casper. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing if they're actually going to make any music or whatever. I'm actually looking forward to seeing what what is going to. How would that sound? Uh, well? uh, it will sound very. It will sound very interesting. Um, because yeah. the thing, is, yeah, it will sound very interesting. Because the thing about um about Gabza, you remember because he also he has an album actually with Questa. Um, mm -hmm. where the first half of the album is basically uh hip hop. And then somewhere mm -hmm. they sort of transitions like in the old. middle, yeah, yeah, quite old sound type thing. And then it's, I'm a piano after that. Um, so with that, it's but then again, it, it's it's a Questa. Questa has this quite old thing about him, um, so it kind of makes Actually. sense to yeah to have a beat uh, to be on a Gabza beat. But with Rick Ross, eight, hey, we'll see. Mm. We'll see. Because the thing is, Rick Ross now, I in some about ways, it is instrumental. Week, I'm just like, ex yeah, he is. I thought about it. I just, I don't know, man. It, and it could work. It really could work, right? Yeah. But I'm just like, hmm. I don't know what kind of sound it gets. Yeah. Would we be getting Ukabza from, remember the Ukabza that I tweeted I like from Dallas, from like 2016 Critics Gabza? Yeah. Or are we getting Copen King's Gabza? You know, are you uh, getting that too like as that? Um, I think most likely. Oh, I don't know. Because Gabza is actually an incredible uh, producer amazing. when you think about it. Amazing. You look at his journey, where he comes from, and and where he is now. 
Um, yeah. He has shown, shown significant growth um, in terms yeah. of, like, the, he, sonically, he has shown significant growth and the way that he yeah. approaches his music. A lot of I'm a piano uh, producers are still doing the same thing and the growth has been very, very yeah. minimal. Uh, but Gabza yeah. has shown um, how, uh, what's the word? He is, he's able to adapt. Uh, let me say that. Yeah. He is able to do quite a lot, uh, which is quite an incred incredible thing uh, for a, a producer like himself. And to think, Guzzi, this is someone who basically learns music by ear and by just mm. producing. Nobody taught him music. He, he didn't study mm. professionally uh, for music. Uh, so it, it's an incredible thing. And again, it goes back to what you usually say. Yeah. So music is universal. And if it's in you, yeah. it is in you. No one can teach you. Uh, yeah. Okay, people sure. can teach you music. Uh, but they there's, can, yeah. yeah, there's very... Uh, there's something about music that is just innate, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's something very special about it. And, and if it's in you, it's in you. Uh, and that's what Gabza has. He has a very special gift. No, but when you think about it, actually, like if you think about Ari Gross and Gabza, it's also, it just made me think about Big Zulu and Gabza. There are people who could have never like seen that working. Yeah. But then they made music and and it actually bangs, you know? Yeah. Because he literally, Gabza has an amazing ear for music. Guys, Gabza is one of the best in the country. I'll give him that, honestly. Yeah. No, they say people deserve their flowers while they're still alive. Yeah, and it's not just about be, him being the best our piano producer. It's just him being one of the best producers, period, um, in the country, uh, yeah. which is quite an quite an incredible thing. And you know, going back to Rick Ross uh, with his car show, um, I think he had about six thousand people just there at at his um, at his house, basically in, in um, the yard. Video. Yeah, in your yard, six thousand people, yard. and there's, and you've got that many people, and there's still so much space left. Uh, and it's not just people alone; it's just it's people with their cars and trailers and um, all that. Yeah, and there's so much space left uh, because apparently a ticket was like three hundred dollars or something, three hundred fifty dollars, uh, somewhere around there. Um, and, and you know the reason why I'm going back mm -hmm. to Rick Ross is because I wanted to ask you who you think um, which artist do you think has made the best transition um, in terms of going from music to business in your opinion or rather let's not say the best but the most interesting transition yeah I wanted to say because what I'm thinking about is not necessarily the best yeah because I don't know what to do, but anyway. No. I don't know what to do, but anyway. Yeah. It's not necessarily the best, but when you think about it, it is the best. I mean, right now, last week, or the last week or the week before, they literally had to turn back on their arrangement or their agreement and be like, actually, we need yeah. to sell these sneakers. And the only way we'll do it is if we get easy to on board, you know? Yeah. And if that for if that isn't genius, I, I on the third they released pieces again like foams, the runners, the slides, like they released a lot on on Saturday, yeah. and they sold out. Yeah, and there's there's like a lot of today, so I'm just like that's a business proper for me. That's the one that works easy and easy. Yeah, and there's Yeezys actually that were released again today. Uh, I think they were supposed to be released at four p.m. or whatever. Uh, but really? apparently, yeah, apparently two minutes before that, they were already sold out. I don't know how that happened, uh, but already there were shoes that were released today and they are all sold out, which is crazy. Yeah. And this is a, it's in it's, South it's, Africa, it's by the way. Crazy. It's crazy. That's something I've been wanting phones, right? I've been wanting yeah. phones for a while, and I, clearly, I'm very slow on the social media. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't like it, those things are out, you know. But and the thing is, after that, I can people buy them to resell. Yeah. As much as I like them, I'm not spending 4.5, 5.5 on rubber, guys. I really love foams. I want foams. They're comfortable. I've worn a friend. Like, they're comfortable. But I'm not spending 
un- runners, you know. When in because initially what they released the first time around, they were one point five, one point six, one point eight. That's okay. Let's sneak a money, you can do that. Yeah. I'm thinking five point four. And they they they're not even warm because anymore we have to wear them with socks all the time. <laughs> Yeah. No. Yeah, it's it's crazy. But uh, I actually saw someone earlier today on Twitter to, complaining about someone who uh, was selling used slides uh, for like six k. Uh, already, they they've been worn, and now they're selling them it again. Wow! And this is six thousand rand. That is crazy. Because even cold order doesn't sell. You sell them for that much. I think the slides are cheaper. I think they're like four k. If not yeah. 5, then the 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 phone runners are more expensive, but then those haven't been worn, you know. So that's understandable. Yeah. You can't tell me something you wore for like six k. No, no. Let's let's wait Yeah, but uh, again, like the the sneakerhead business is crazy in general. Um, it's just crazy in general because you find people who it is. they have no intention of wearing any of these shoes. All the ones you do is just get their hands on uh, their hands on them, and then sell them for ridiculous prices. Uh, and it's usually the people who buy first who are able to get all these shoes. Um, and apparently, I think Nike at the moment has been uh, developed a system for their website, which stops people mm-hmm. using bots to to buy these shoes. Um, right. Yeah, That's because true. previously really people good. would uh, would have bots. Uh, you know, getting ready yeah. for yeah to to buy as soon as something okay. is put up yeah. is available, then they, they get all the shoes, which is crazy. Um, uh, but anyway, wow. Kanye, yeah, in in your opinion, Ye has the most had had the most interesting transition, and I don't know if you did watch the and Dre. I think Dre as well. Dr. Dre. Um, I think so. for financially, financially for me, financially, guys, because at the end of the day, money is important. So financially, I feel like yeah. it made sense. <laughs> yeah. Um. Because now that you mentioned Dre, I'm actually going. Uh, I'm I'm thinking Fifty Cent as well. Uh. But mm-hmm. then again, Fifty Cent. I don't know how much it's worth now because he was fighting that whole court battle thing where he said he's bankrupt. Uh. But. Mm-hmm. In the early 2000s, when he was still hot, um, he was the first, I think, first person in hip hop to reach $300 million. But somehow he was not able to actually get past that, or at least from what we've mm. seen, what, what he declared publicly, was not able to get past that. Um, but for me, Rick Ross actually has maybe the most interesting, made the most interesting transition from music to uh to business and the reason why i say this is because he owns i don't know how many um how many uh wing stops in the u.s and interestingly enough yeah, with, with, the, with yeah with, with those wing stops he actually all gave some to to his family uh to family members yeah, like his aunts yeah. and yeah. and cousins and and whatnot to actually run run those and then now i'm looking at the at this car show thing there's no rapper or at least that I've heard of, that actually does car shows. Um, and it's very interesting. And he's just having fun, man. Uh, and he's having a lot of fun with this thing. Yeah, and, and cars as a business have money. Like, not just internationally, even locally. Because I don't know if yeah. you've noticed. And South Africans are really big into um, shifting, spinning, stunts and everything. And I feel like they all, now they're going back also to that. I saw who's this Opori, like Lord Pori and Big Zulu and stuff, they're constantly having these events that are, yes, they're performing, but they're also based around cars. It's a spin show. Mang Mang versus Mang Mang. Big Zulu is going to get there in spin, you know. Pori is going to get the show up with his nice cool shows. And when that happens, his friends also with the money pull through and that draws the crowd. Yeah. People are paying for this. So now it's it's a whole it's a business now. This one is feeling this one. This one is feeling this one because now there's also it's creating employment for me. That's why I think I like about it. Yeah. It's creating employment because there are people who are selling, they making food, drinks, the security guards, people who are cleaning. You know, 
booking the venue, you're paying someone for the money, you know, uh, yeah. for the venue. So it's a whole lot of this growth, as much as you might not be it because you're thinking it's just a car show, people are just spinning. But then you think about it, the spinning culture has grown so much in the country because I'm into cars, right? And I've been following it for like, quite some time. And there are events that I went to five, six years ago, when I go to today, that's amazing. The venue is better, the quality is better, the safety, the safety is way better, you know. You feel like, okay, they're actually working on improving this thing. Yeah. So yeah, class, that, class and, uh, look at the business. Yeah, they are. Uh, they are. And also just generally looking at the um, at the car market, uh, mm-hmm. to get a, you know, right now, it, you're probably going to pay, most likely going to pay well over a million rands. Which is also ridiculous. Yeah, which is also ridiculous. Because... But I will. It's fine. I will. Yeah. <laughs> I'll accept it. I will spend a million plus on the cushion. I don't yeah. know a million from where, but I will want to. I, will... <laughs> I, actually have a, I actually have a friend who used to have one, uh, a blue one. He sold it, I think, around 2016 or something. I think he sold it for like three 300,000 or or less than no, I think it was much less than that. Um, and now that is looking at the prices is, is regretting his decision uh, to sell it back then because now he could have sold it I for mean, like eight eight hundred. But even back then, but even back then, it was wanted. There was no yeah. need to sell it. Yeah, it, it was wanted, but keep it forever. Yeah, it was wanted, but at the time, I think you could get like a E three to five IS for like the one fifty or hundred thousand, uh, you know, like yeah. ten years ago, and that was it. It was kind of reasonable, even though it's a bit high, but it was kind of reasonable uh, considering the fact that it is yeah. a limited edition and and all those all those things. But now mm. to get one for ten times that amount. Uh, it's just crazy, and just because it's wow. uh, yeah, it's it's just, it's just crazy. I would understand the triple three i going for well over a million, because yes. those are even more rare than he than the Kushesh. Yeah, yeah, much even more. Rare. In my in my entire life, yeah. I've never actually seen one with my own eyes, uh, but I know that they exist. They are somewhere out there. Um, I don't know. I don't even know if BMW South Africa even has one themselves. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's how rare it is. But anyway, uh, we are talking music. We are talking uh, like the whole business thing. Um, and it, yeah. again, like Greek Ross for me is very, very interesting. And then going back to Dr. Dre, um, but Dr. Dre, I'm not really quite sure. Uh, and the reason why I say I'm not quite sure is because. Um, Outside of music, Dr. Dre pretty much only has beats by Dre. And for that, he sold, okay, he first sold it the first time around. Um, I think it picked up the value, bought it back again. And then he sold it again a second time around. And this time with a far better deal uh, deal than, yeah. than before, selling it to Apple. And I remember, Uzi, there was a bit of an issue with Tyrese as well. Because Tyrese went on Instagram live when they were told not to say, not to say, tell anyone, not to say anything, awesome. and they were celebrating uh, the sale of Beast by Dre to Apple, and and they shared that on Instagram, which was a whole Isn't thing. Isn't Tyrese the guy who acts on Fast and Fast the Furious? Fast. Yeah, uh, he's on Baby Boy. So he's like he's that on... also in real life. Basically, he can't keep his mouth shut. Yeah, no, that's full stop. Like, yeah, he couldn't keep quiet. <laughs> <laughs> but he wasn't acting. He nah, wasn't nah, nah that, that, that's actually him. And it's also a beautiful thing, wow. um, you know, going to Tyrese because he's also, uh, he, he sings very well. Like, he sings incredibly well. Um, yeah, oh, so it's, love him. <laughs> yeah, so... Love him. Music-wise, uh, love him. Yeah, uh, uh, and... Because I was trying to think which Tyrese song. Um, the only th- the only song that I can really go back to. Was, How are you is... gonna act like that? <laughs> <laughs> well, the like the first song for me that comes to mind is the uh, the best man song. I don't know if you remember mm-hmm. that one, but it's like a yeah, it's a, it's a lot of guys on there singing. Uh, mm-hmm. But yeah, it, 
It's incredible. I mean, he's, he's an incredible singer, generally, and a great actor yes, as well. Yes. Yes. Um, no, I think no. I think with this, I think with Dre when that happens, I think he just wanted. I could be projecting, right? But I feel like you know when you not necessarily tired, but you are tired, just like I wanna relax. I don't wanna stress anymore. I don't yeah. wanna go through a lot. But I still wanna make money. From where I'm sitting, let's how it look like. Let me just release the stress and still get money from it. You know. Yeah, um, and sometimes it makes sense, and especially in their, um, in Dr. Dre's position, because uh, mm. he doesn't have the time to run the business on a daily basis. But now we had, an, mm. had the opportunity, because he has this big, uh, lucrative business, he has this huge product, um, which is basically everywhere. Uh, everyone wants it. Costs a lot of money. High quality sound, something that he's proud of. Um, but yeah. bringing to, uh, bringing Apple in to actually buy this thing, it means that he is relinquishing the everyday stuff. Now, if, now yeah. Apple will have to worry about all of that, um, and it still it, it still keeps a stake yeah. in the thing. And now it's going to sell even more than before. Um, going to make more sales than if he actually kept it. Um, while he's getting money in the bank, uh, getting a, like a, a lump sum amount for, yeah. for this thing. Um, and also, I think, because I think the deal came with a bit of a stake <laughs> in, in Apple itself, uh, which is yeah. quite quite yeah. interesting. Uh, so it's a very interesting deal that, that he got out of that, out of that one. It is, and he, he gets to wear white Air Force every day. If it is, if yeah, I've seen him <laughs> it was the same thing every day. Um, I, I, as, and, and I realized when I actually really? watched this documentary that it was the same <laughs> thing every day. It's it's sort of like me, um, which I, with, that's part where I, I kind of relate. Yeah, because I also wear the, pretty Definitely. much the same thing uh, on a daily basis. You wear um, white t shirt and black t shirt only. That's yeah. yeah. And and it's Air Force, uh, Air Force One sneakers or my All Star, and that's it, and a pair of jeans. Uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> um, have, have you seen the the movie Air? Uh, no, I'm very bad at movies. I do watch no. movies. It's horrible trait, but I don't watch movies. Uh, uh, it's it about? Very, um, it's about the Michael jo Actually, basically Nike. How Nike was able to get Michael Jordan to to join the the company. Um, I mean, it's a story. It's a story that if you follow the Michael Jordan, if you ever followed Michael Jordan's oh, story, say, yeah, then yeah. They, yeah, they just took that story and no. uh, yeah, put it into a film. Now, the interesting thing is in the movie, you never get to see Michael Jordan's face, or at least the guy who plays uh, Michael Jordan, hey. they never show his face. The only time we actually see his face. Um, is actually Michael Jordan because they use like his images and his actual images from mm -hmm. some of the games and clips and, and things like that. Um, now, I have a theory, a theory of my own, because this movie is uh, produced by, uh, by Amazon Prime, uh, by Prime Video, um, mm -hmm. but then it is also produced by Ben Affleck and Matt Damon. Now, my theory Mm. around this is that the reason why the actor that played Michael Jordan were not able to see him and I think he only said like one thing in the entire movie just one word uh, if I'm correct is that Matt Damon and Ben Affleck probably didn't have the money to pay Michael Jordan uh, to pay Michael Jordan to have someone who actually plays him in the movie and have like a huge dialogue and, and things like that or um, Michael Jordan has a list of actual producers, maybe black producers, um, that he wants, uh, that he wants yeah, that he wants to tell his story, or it could actually be both. Yeah. But I'm actually leaning on on both. Because Matt Damon and Ben Affleck didn't have the money, yeah. and yeah, Michael Jordan is very particular about who he wants his, his story told by. Yeah. Yeah, I hear you. I feel like for me, it's more of the latter. Because as much as he's a businessman, right? And yeah. he's expensive, let's not lie about that. 
I feel like if it was more of the people that he wanted to work with or people that, like, at least he just maybe dear to his heart or, like, like people, uh, you know, it would be a thing of, okay, pay me, pay me what you can, you know, yeah. but let's work. Let's make a beautiful thing. Because yeah. it's not like he needs the money anyway. Yes, money goes to money. The more money you have, the more money you want, right? Yeah. But I think if you're more about it, because when you think back, remember that, um, that documentary that played on Netflix. Yeah, the, the, the last just, um, Documenting everyone, the last dance. Yeah. Like, he was there fully, you know? He was thoroughly yeah. enjoying that, even when they were playing back his old um, games on the laptop, on, on the MacBook and stuff. Like, you could see how invested he was. Yeah. Because I believe of how everything was put together, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and no, the interesting thing about the last dance is that it was actually meant. Okay, this is and this is coming from Scotty Pippen. Um, apparently, it was meant to be about the guy. Bulls. <laughs> it, it was meant to to be about the Bulls in general, but somehow mm. um, Netflix made it about Michael Jordan, and I, I feel like that's an entire entirely different story um, in itself. But now I have a question for you, Ne. Uh, going back to air. Mm-hmm. Um, how would you describe mm-hmm. when when someone says they're making a passive income? How would you describe passive income? Mm. I don't have a problem with working. I just don't want to work. Yeah. <laughs> so, I think, like for me, and it's such a bad trade to have late. <laughs> so it's like I just want money to work for me. So I. Yeah, like for me, passive income is some is it's just money that comes in, um, sort of like from a side hustle, right? Um, mm-hmm. At least that's how I understand it. I haven't but actually looked it up. I don't want to hustle. I don't want to work hard. I don't know. <laughs> like right now, this is my coach Jordan, right? Yeah. Yes, there's Nike, man. Nike is making money off it. They understand what we go through to get Jordans. Automatically, that's that's money. But, yeah, that we literally fight. We fight to spend our hard earned money. I think that's what's crazy about the sneaker culture. Why am I fighting to spend money in Uganda and Jalo exchanging for? But this is what we're doing, and it's not just South Africa. It's not just the states. It's not just Europe. You know, it's all yeah, around it's globally. Like, yes, yeah. oh, it's, it's all around. That's money that you need. Yeah, like, and, and the reason why I ask you what, how would you understand passive income to be? Um, it's just money where you have a main income, uh, where main source of income, and then there's passive income, which is coming. Mm. It's, it's it's a le- little less, or could be much yes. less than, than your main than your main source of, uh, source of income. In. Now, at the end of air, they say, "Good see, Michael Jordan makes a passive income of four hundred million dollars uh, just from Jordans alone a year." <laughs> Let's explain this because wow, no, that's not how we do with our lives. <laughs> like, imagine that. Imagine <laughs> you have uh, yeah. four hundred million dollars a year, um, and they say that is passive income for you. Right now, let me tell you. Even if I could get four million rand, not forty, four million rand a year, I, I'll make it. I'll, I'll triple it. <laughs> God must test me. Let's. God must just test me. I'm one of those people. I'll show him. You know. No. So, okay. I remember like watching those documentaries. I'm just like, these people are like, making money. I mean, mm. even Scotty Pippen and them. Those people are. I'm just like, what yeah. was the other one with the, who was the crazy guy? Um, what? The red, it's not red man. Was red man. Um, <laughs> red man. Um, and and look, it, it keeps it keeps coming and going. Uh, I, I yeah, forgot I forget him, because he used to do even his daughter. money. I'm just like, so if you this money, yes, that guy. Who just go and perform, then he come back and play, then he doesn't want to play, doesn't want to train, doesn't want to smoke the whole night. 
He's money as well. So I'm thinking, yeah. if this oak is this money, how are LeBron James and them? Rest in peace to Kobe. How, is, how rich was Kobe? You know? It makes a question so many things. Like, oh, guys, basketball yeah. is money. And it's, it's the endorsements. Endorsements are wild when it comes to basketball. Yeah, they are. And, you know, when I actually uh, learned this uh, today when I actually watched the movie, uh, that the reason why Michael Jordan today is able to get money from, from Jordans is the mm-hmm. deal that his mom made with Nike. The, the stipulation for them that. to join Nike was that uh, every, every pair of Jordans that is sold anywhere in the world, mm-hmm. uh, Michael Jordan has to get a percentage uh, from that. Like he has to get a certain mm-hmm. amount of money from every shoe that is that is sold, um, and that is why also because one, the Jordans, uh, any actually it's not even just the shoe, like any item mm-hmm. that Nike puts the name Jordan on, um, oh, he God. has to yeah he has to make money from it. So when you think about it, first of all, the Jordans changed the sneaker culture. Uh, there was no real yeah. sneaker culture before the Jordan one uh, came out. Um, he changed the game in basketball entirely because yeah. apparently yeah. about fifty one per yeah fifty one percent of the of a shoe that a player wore on court on the court it had to be white. Um, so fifty one yeah. percent of the shoe it needs to be white. Uh, and then the Jordan ones came, and it was mostly red. Uh, it was in the Chicago yeah. Bulls ca- uh, colors. Oh, now the color. penalty for that, and this was like nineteen what nineteen eighty six or something. Um, a penalty for not wearing the right type of shoe on on the court was that you get fined five thousand dollars per game. And Nike said, "Dude, wear these shoes, <laughs> wear these shoes on the court, and we will pay yeah. the fine for you." Uh, they made. Uh, they sold, I think, uh, about $141 million. They made $141 million uh, from the shoes in the first year uh, that the Jordans came up. They they had the vision. They knew what they were doing. Yeah. You know, when, but, when you have the vision for something, that's what they did. They knew. Yeah. And, and the thing is, uh, I actually forget who the guy was who actually made the deal. Uh, because Phil Knight, initially, um, he didn't want to have Michael Jordan. Um, there was also Rob Strasser. Uh, he was the marketing guy. He didn't believe that they would actually get Michael Jordan. Now, this one guy, yeah. he said, listen, we have a $250,000 budget to get uh, three athletes. We're looking to get three or four athletes out of uh, who are actually going to varsity. Oh, no, who actually just came out of varsity, going to the right. NBA. Um, so this guy said, listen, Let's take that budget, 250000 not blow it on three or four players, but let's just give it all, give mm-hmm. all of it to, yeah, to, to Michael Jordan. And then they developed a sneaker, named it, uh, named it the Air Jordan. They actually, the person who gave it the name Air Jordan was a guy who actually designed sneakers for, for Nike or designed really? sneakers for Nike at the time, yeah. So it was basically working yeah. in his own space, like in the basement, whatever, mm-hmm. or rather in the lower offices. So he gave it the name Air Jordan. Uh, but yeah, this one guy, uh, I forget his name, but he is the one who actually believed in Michael Jordan. Um, yeah. He's the one who pushed uh, for Michael Jordan to sign with Nike. And he basically put us. Uh, convinced Michael's mom would say, listen, bring your son to us and let us work. Because Michael Jordan was going to Adidas. That, that's where he wanted to go. Yes. And part of the deal, and part of the deal as well was that he gets a Mercedes uh, 380 SL um, at the time. That was part of the deal. He gets the money and then he gets the, gets the car as well. Uh, and he said, actually, uh, I think he said it before, uh, before he actually signed with anyone. When he made, uh, yeah. yeah, when when he made the the conditions, would say anyone who buys me the Mercedes 380SL, they are going to I'm going to have uh, a deal with them for life, and that's what he has now with with Nike. Besides all the money, 
It's probably the 380 SL yeah. that <laughs> that is keeping him around. I didn't know about the car. I, I didn't know about the car. Yeah, and and then I hear him. I hear yeah. him. Remember how I said I love cars? <laughs> I hear him. Yeah. There are things I would do for like a good four or five guys. <laughs> I understand. Yeah. Yeah, but it, it, it's just an interesting story. Like, uh, if you it's do have Prime, yeah, if you have Amazon Prime. I'll definitely watch it. I, I watch a lot of, like, what if I do watch a movie or documentary and it's not about murder? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely going to be about basketball. Okay. Like, I, I, sports in general, man, I, I'm really a huge sports person. Yeah. I watch a lot of sports parties, you know. Like, I'm yeah. that person I will binge watch um, Formula One, Drive to Survive. I will watch a lot of um, documentaries on Netflix about sports and stuff. So I'll definitely yeah. check it out. Yeah, is it on yeah. Netflix or is it... Uh, no, it's on um, Amazon Prime. Amazon. It's on Prime Video. It's on, okay, cool. yeah. yeah. It's on Prime Video. Very interesting uh, story. Question, question. Guys, how do they play basketball with Jordan? Because maybe it's just me. Jordan's young, seen that. I feel like... <laughs> The, the ones are better. The ones are better. But guys, the fours, the fives, the richer six, the elevens, the taxis, I'm just like, these things are heavy. I like, can't they running in these but the heights and because they are tall. Yeah, here's the thing. Um in the when uh when this guy, yeah, he went down to his name is Pete, I think, uh, the guy who designed the sneakers, uh who designed the Jordan. Um, he went to him and said, listen, it is Friday. I think it was a Thursday, Thursday or Friday. He said, listen, we have a meeting with uh, Michael Jordan and his family on on Monday. So we need to have a sneaker by then. Now, this guy is like, okay, it's fine. We can, we can make it happen. We can, we can design something now uh, and have it done here and have it ready by Monday. Now, his question was, do you want form or do you want function? Uh, you cannot, it's very rare to so you, you have both. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's very rare that you'll have both uh, because you, either you make it very, a beautiful sneaker or you make it a functional sneaker, functional uh, something sneaker. that, yeah, that, that they can play in. And they went for four. So that's why also, as you as you say, you see, it doesn't make sense how they actually are able to to play to play the, the sport in, in those shoes. Uh, but also, I, I, I suppose... Because being an athlete, it means that they actually practice in those shoes. Yeah, uh, practice, yeah. yeah they practice in those shoes. And also, they are very, very strong, those guys. Uh, very strong on their feet. So it kind of feels comfortable, I guess. It Ma- makes sense to them. And that makes also makes sense why <laughs> a lot of the other sneakers are uh, made pretty much and by everyone makes it else. Worse, Even the yeah, Kobe's. Like that... and... Yeah. <laughs> Very, very, very high, very uh, large sizes that they have. Um, it, it kind of makes sense why a lot of a lot of the other Nike exactly. sneakers are not very nice. It means that they're actually functional and they haven't made them beautiful. So, uh, <laughs> kind of makes sense. Yeah, true, true, true. Yeah, no, it makes sense because it's like no, guys, these things are heavy. I remember the first time I wore like the the fours. I was like, I'm supposed to walk in those. But I'm gonna work in those because they are fire. But I was like, those two are heavy, you know. So I always see them just run. And cause my mom is size five. I, I'm a I wear a grade school, and already yeah. they're heavy. I'm just like, how are you wearing the size eleven? But hey, do you? Because they're always yeah. running those things. They're training them. I was like, yearly, yearly, yearly. Yeah, and and I like that you mentioned the the Jordan Force because I was at uh, Sentin City, like I think it was in Feb or something. Uh, there's a shop that sells, I suppose, ex- the exclusive stuff. Um, so I think they actually also uh, bought those ones like on when they dropped or whatever, and then now they're reselling them, but they actually opened a, a shop for it. Uh, there's a Jordan, mm-hmm. some Jordan fours. I forgot what they're called, but it's the purple ones, and they're selling them for fourteen k over there in that shop. Is it is it and, not the ones that are PSG? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not. No, it's not. It's not. It's not the PSG. It's not the PSG purple. Um, 
it's but the the they were very popular when they came out. I think everyone was pretty much talking about them. It's a very light purple, and I think it's got a bit of yeah. green on it. Yeah, uh, selling them for fourteen k. Oh, I remember, like, them. I remember. Yeah, yeah, selling them for fourteen k. I'm like, there's no ways. Um, I don't like Jordans that much. Like the only Jordans I like are the are the fours and the thirteens, but I'm never paying that much for a pair of sneakers. At least not now. Uh, one day. One day I'll be able to pay that much, but at this very moment, those ones no are reason. reasonable though. Do you see the off white ones? Yeah, the off white, the off whites are very uh, crazy. Wait, even the Dior's pay for like forty k. Yeah, even the Jordan one uh, Dior's uh, also in, insane. Um, they're also so in, insane amount that they're selling them for. I think we just broke. No, it, it is that it definitely it is that because I, I was looking because I mean I, I guess myself I'm just broke. <laughs> but myself I'm not I'm not the kind of person who likes designer clothing like Gucci and yeah, same, um, same, and Louis Vuitton yeah. and whatnot. But there's a pair of uh Air Force Ones. Uh, I think it's uh it's the highs, uh, but it's a it's a Air Force One and Louis Vuitton. Uh, collaboration oh. yeah those ones i would those buy fire. yeah those, those ones fire. i would buy uh but yeah, generally for me to go into a louis vuitton shop one day and buy clothing i don't think so unless it's like a suit or or, or a pair of jeans that doesn't show off too much of the, of the, of the label of, yeah. of, of formal shoes of formal shoes they do them they do them very well because it's yeah not, they're not flashy yeah. How much they have seen, they really not flash. It's standard. If you look at it and you pay attention, you're like, oh, actually, that's LV. Yeah. But they're not giving LV everywhere. Like, um, like some the bank, they don't do that with the formal shoes. Yeah. Actually, and, and an interesting thing, now that you actually mentioned that, someone did say, uh, these designer labels, uh, designer brands, rather, they have this thing where they have tiers of uh, the clothing that they make. So at the yeah. very low, at the very low tier is the clothing with all the branding everywhere we can uh, see what you, mm-hmm. what a person is wearing. And then at the very high, the, the highest tier is the one where with your Bill Gates yeah. and, and whatnot, um, where you you don't see the branding anywhere. Hey, sorry, man, my laptop but, died. And I still, okay. I still get the charger. Yeah, no, I, I figured. Yeah, I figured something went wrong. Um, but yeah, but, and we have actually gone way past the time they were supposed to. Um, <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> we will have to wrap it up very soon. Nothing but, new there. Nothing yeah, new. <laughs> yeah, but but you know, as, as I was saying, you see, there's like the the tiers. Uh, the highest one, the highest tier with all these brands is that they, you don't see the the branding anywhere. Um, you just see it as plain clothing and uh, you think it's as simple as it comes, but it yeah. costs quite a lot. Uh, it costs yeah. quite a lot. Like, and, and they can even make you make you your own clothes even. Um, if you have, like, just like uh, Steve Jobs with his turtleneck, mm-hmm. um, he had had them made specifically for him. I can't remember which brand um, it was actually. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah I had them, I had the head designers on call to say he needs like five more total necks uh, at any given time and he would get them. And I think God knows that I wouldn't know how to explain money yet. <laughs> he knew. No, he knew. I'm not above doing that. I mean, you know, when it comes to fashion, I, I will do that. Whatever I want, whatever makes me happy. So I understand. As much as I wouldn't do total necks because the guys, they, would think, they look cute, but I can't do them for a long time, you know. Yeah, but nah. I would, I wouldn't mind doing something like that. Something that's yeah. like literally just for me and me alone, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Like, firstly, I haven't worn a turtle neck since I was in preschool, um, and then secondly, really? yeah, <laughs> yeah, since preschool, I haven't worn a turtle neck, and then secondly, um, there is, I saw an article from, uh, or at least a headline about Cardi B um, saying that she's uh, actually, she's bored now because um, she is make, she has, she basically has everything that she, that she wants because she has enough money um, and 
life has gotten boring because now she's able to get everything, mm. anything and everything that she wants. Um, so, and I say that because of what you just said, Uzi, God knew Uzi wouldn't know how to act. But if you have enough money and your money lasts long enough, at some point you're just going to get bored and be like, uh, you know what, what am I, what am I really doing? You know, I bought everything that I want to, that, that I want, I'm able to go anywhere I want to go. And that's when you actually start to, uh, hopefully, you start to realize, we'd say, there's, maybe there's more to life than actually spending money and getting whatever. And you maybe start to do things that are more meaningful for you. Money is what's meaningful. <laughs> and that's because you don't have it now. But, you know, obviously, what, once you have it, it's like, uh, what, what am I really doing? That's all I'm um, missing, guys. That's all yeah. I'm missing. I need... I, I need a money because nah. no but i hear what you're saying because when you think about cardi cardi um she didn't grow up in money yeah you know she struggled to get where she's at and now the fact that she can just afford to buy a man a car that's worth a million dollars for his yeah. birthday that's wild it, it 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 means then you have everything that you need i mean the amount of breaking bags that this lady has how much is one breaking bag you know so it's I think of, okay, I'm happy, I'm content, I've done everything. What is there more for me to do? But with her, there is. Because she's been running off one album for six years, Manelis. Yeah. <laughs> and I feel like she doesn't realize that we are paying attention. Yeah, she should be making more music. But... She should be making music. <laughs> yeah, but... She's bored. She can't yeah. get bored. Yeah, and, and you know, like, when when I think about it, we are, because I, I I watch a lot of like uh, the uh, of Top Gear and the the Grand Tour, and when mm-hmm. you actually listen to what Jeremy Clarkson and James May, the way the way that they talk about cars is that at this point I think it's a similar feeling to having a lot of money, where at some point every car most cars feel exactly the same. And when you look at yeah, yeah. their favorite cars, uh, cars that they consider to be uh, favorites to them, it's not the expensive <clears throat> cars, it's not the super cars, but it's the much it's not, more simpler yeah. cars because they have a lot of character. You know, uh, like James May would loves a Renault uh, Sandero. Um, mm-hmm. uh, Jeremy Clarkson loves the Golf GTI. Uh, and uh, what... Uh, Richard Hammond is more of a uh, Land Rover, the Defender type of guy, the, the older one, mm-hmm. um, you know. And it, it kind of makes sense because that's there's totally, a lot of character totally. in those cars. But at yeah. some point, if you drive a Ferrari, you drive one Ferrari, you've, you've driven most Ferraris, you know. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And even luxury cars, if you get in one, you, you, you've been in most of them. Uh, so mm-hmm. yeah, it's, it's, yeah. It's, it's, I suppose it's a similar similar feeling with money, similar where thing. yes, it buys the the convenience, you know, it buys the, uh, now, the I easiness. Now the question. Yeah. Now I'm thinking about it in music terms. Is that why we, get, we don't get the same quality of music or the same experience we got from someone who was still hungry once they've made it? It's exactly it. It's exactly it. Because I, I used to feel that same way. And it's partly why uh, I question some of the decisions that some of these guys make, um, especially mm. now looking at YSL, what they're going through, Boyang Thug and, and all of them. Because yeah. these guys, first of all, they started doing illegal stuff because they wanted to have money. Money was the money, primary exactly. reason why they were yeah. selling drugs and doing whatever. And then the music came. The reason why they made music is because they wanted to get out of the the drug game, all of the these illegal stuff, and they were able to make very good music. But then, the the ease and the convenience that the money brought from legal money, it sort of left a gap in them because now they're no longer the now they're able to predict things that are going to happen in their lives. It's easy. Okay, I can, I, I'm going to release a song. Um, I'm going to get mm. at least a million dollars from this yeah. uh, song alone. 
if I release an album, I'm going to get at least $10 million uh, from the album. Mm. But when you go back to doing all this illegal stuff, uh, rolling dice, which is what uh, took Takeoff's life, uh, you know, selling drugs, killing people, whatever, mm. all these things, there's a lot of un- unpredictability of what's going to happen. So it's similar with music. These guys were hungry. They didn't know the kind of money that they were going to make from music. And it's a what is a, it was a new experience for them. They're thinking, okay, now I no longer have to worry about whether I'm going to be alive tomorrow because then I'm going to move out of this place and move into a safe neighborhood. Um, I'll be traveling pretty much the entire country, traveling the world, seeing all these things, and doing it based, practically for free because they, you get booked outside of the country. The person who booked you mm. is paying for everything, um, you know, and everything. things like that. And then it becomes sort of, uh, what it, it becomes the same. Yeah, it's, it's always mm. the same thing over and repetitive, over again. Yeah. yeah, it becomes repetitive. And the, even the music um, itself, because now how are you going to rap about uh, an, a life that you no longer live um, on a regular yeah. basis? You know about it. But when you talk to people who are still there, you realize what you've actually gone out of touch. You can't relate where, anymore. Yeah, you can't relate as, as as well as you used to. And then now also talking about this new life that you're living, it, there's a bit of the imposter syndrome that's there. Uh, and there's a bit of, actually, I do not entirely, I, I don't belong here. You know, I belong, yeah, I live, I but yeah. uh, now I'm living this I'm kind here of now. life. Yeah, I'm yeah. here now. So there's no connection really between the heart and the life and the and the and the lyrical content anymore. And even if you're going to talk about all these things that you used to talk about initially when when you first started music, it's 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 telling. Would say you're no longer there uh, because there's a lot mm. of gaps within the yeah. music. So uh, I believe that's why the music becomes different when uh, people start making money. And that's why we also able, yeah. were able to see the, the transitions in the way that uh, people do their music. We were talking about Rick Ross earlier. Um, you think about mm. Port of Miami. Port of Miami is my, very, very different from richer than uh, richer than I've ever yeah. been. Uh, you know, things like that. So uh, I, I think that that's uh, that's pretty much it. And you explain it so well because I want—I'm very entitled when it comes to <laughs> like people that I support musically. In my yeah. head, I still feel like in my head and my heart, I still feel like you should be rapping the way you were in 2012. But, yeah. Definitely, because that's what I fell in love with. That's what I fell in love with. But yeah. the way you're putting it right now, I can't expect them to rap about being hungry anymore because they're no longer hungry. They're not. Yeah. Literally, they're okay. They're no longer struggling to make it to the studio. They have chauffeurs now. Yeah. They can afford to go in ever, you know. So life has changed. And I feel like this what I'm saying, the way you pray it right now, it's making me feel less entitled thought in acknowledging but they're at a different point in their life. So they're gonna rap about what they relate to currently or what's happening around them. Yeah. So they're not necessarily going as hard because and life isn't hitting as hard anymore because I think you're rapping from a space of hunger, you know. Yeah, life was difficult, so they were trying to make it out of the hood. They were trying to eat, you know. And now none of that is an issue. Everything is comfort, so it's no longer a thing of it's difficult. It's no longer a thing of I'm hungry or I need to make it because they have. So it's a thing of yeah. I'm just doing it for the love now. Like whatever comes to mind, I'll play it out there. So I think yeah. the way you explained it makes it a bit. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and and that and and I think that also makes sense why Cardi B has been running off the same album, uh, for six years, because now what how what is he going to really talk about that is going exactly. to be be better I don't than like her debut the same album? Thing. Exactly. Yeah, definitely not going to get the same thing. Uh, but yeah, yeah, but it's it's music, man. Uh, especially with with rap music, I feel like that. Uh, where, but actually. I think music in general, uh, music in general, yeah. unless you're going to be talking about relationships and uh, talking about love, because that is something that is within you, you know, uh, it's something mm. that you keep doing. But when you go to, if you're going to be talking about money, you're going to be talking about struggles, you want to be uh, doing the 
aspirational music is going to be it's going to sound a lot different once you've uh, achieved everything mm. uh, that you aspire to have. Mm. Now, if, when you mention that, actually makes sense because it just made me think about who's this, um Shaba. Yeah. Shaba has been consistent because that's what he's about. He's about Tano. He's about Impilo in general. You know. Yeah. So it's easy for him to be on the same wavelength. Three albums in, and he's still consistent, still giving yeah. us the same kind of music because he wasn't rapping about the honey he wanted back then. But now mm-hmm. he has gotten. It's also about totally now. Now what? You know, yeah. It can't like it can't get more premium than that because that's premium struggle for like for like a better word for you. You yeah. know, but if you're rapping about Utanda, as you said, or singing about love and about Impilo in general, it becomes easier because it's still the same. You know, yes. It's still the yeah. same kind of love. It's still the same kind of life experiences. So it's easy to just change the tune a bit. But still be on the same wavelength. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's that's basically it. Um, I don't know. I, I, I've I've run of the I've run out of things to talk about today. Uh, do you have anything that you you want to add or you want to touch on? Yeah, no, I have one. I saw a snippet of Lazo's video on his Instagram. Did he release the video, the entire video? Yes, it did. But I saw um a post on his Instagram, but I didn't, uh, I didn't have time to check out the whole thing. So, but yes. I love kids running around there. Yeah, yeah, he did. Um, I, I I don't know if you if the one that you saw is like the first verse or the second verse, um, but uh, because that's pretty much it. Where he's just walking walking in the street, um, the mm-hmm. support where he's basically dancing and it, as he walks. As he walks down the street, um, he basically tags people in uh, to join him on this on this walk that is uh, that is okay. doing on the street, and uh, more and people join him um, on there. And his uh, has this uh, rose in his hand. Uh, that's pretty much it. And it's it's a it's a great uh, it's a great video. And I feel like he achieved uh, what he wanted to to achieve as, as far as how it yeah. came out. Yeah, as far as what we were able to see. Um, he did what he what, uh, he got what he what he wanted to to get out of that uh, video, uh, but it, overall it's a great album. Uh, it's a incredible song in itself because uh, yeah. you can yeah I mean another another thing about Land one thing about Landros is his consistency lyrically uh, yeah. so far. Uh, so we are yeah, here to see where he's time. going uh, going forward over yeah. the next couple of years, but so far. Uh, very consistent, um, and I think it might be actually be getting even better. Even though there aren't a lot of songs that we've that we've heard, uh, but it I is. feel like yeah, I, I feel like yeah. it's getting uh, better. You, you can you can hear uh, just a little bit, but yeah, uh, it's it's a it's a beautiful it's a beautiful video. No, I need to check it out because I just saw a snippet. Um, yeah, the Sunday. Well, we're going yeah. to check this out, but I haven't gotten the chance, so that's what yeah. I'm looking for. Actually, yeah, I don't know yeah. if he has the link on there, but I'll I'll afford I'll, I'll afford you the link, uh, for the video, so you can it's, see it on YouTube. But I actually even posted on the on the thing on the description, um, of yeah. this episode. Yeah, oh, that's amazing. I'm gonna check it out because one thing about Len Rose, one of the most nicest artists we have in this country right now. Yeah, and also I can say which you is uh, about me. And rap. Yeah. <laughs> so one thing I can also say, yeah, having met him personally, is that he's an incredible guy, man. He's a, a very, very nice guy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So and you can tell, you can tell the way he like he interacts on on social media. Like this guy generally gives good vibes, you know. Yeah, yeah. Because that's something we can tell from afar. Here, yeah, it's not nice, nice yeah. but with him, we can tell it's genuine. Yeah, yeah, he's a, he's, a, he's a genuinely nice guy. Genuinely like, nice guy. Look what I just came across. It's the video. Look what I just came across. <laughs> it's the algorithm doing this thing. <laughs> <laughs> algorithm doing his thing. I picked up my phone, I got an Instagram, Len Rose. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I don't have anything to add. Um, you do, you, do you still have something that no, just came up? Well. 
You're good. All right. Nah, I'm um, well. I'm happy. All right, cool. So we'll be back again. Um, thank you for, for tuning in. Thank you for, for watching. Um, again, please subscribe. Please like. Uh, please uh, comment. Please share this video. Um, we always having a good time, and we hope that you had a good time with us again today. Uh, and rest assured, big things are coming uh, from the oracles. Yeah. Uh, but then again, we'll be back again next week. So have a good one. Uh, cheers. Goodbye.